What's cracking, big dogs? I got some beautiful, gorgeous, fabulous. We're doing mock draft today. A mock draft, but for those of y'all itching, itching to start doing real drafts again, you're in luck. Today, I want to reintroduce myself. My name is drafters.com. It's every Friday last summer. I would do a mock draft on the draft app. For those of y'all that are unfamiliar with what happened with the draft app, that was a really fun platform to, uh, to play on. Really, really good time. Very aesthetic. The best ball drafts were holded, were helded, were hold, did, 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 did. This is going to be a fucked up video. I can already tell. Were held on the draft app. FanDuel owned the draft app. FanDuel decided to discontinue draft as a company. They are integrating the draft app onto their platform. We have no idea when that's going to happen. We don't know if it's going to be this summer. We don't know if it's going to be the 2021 season. So you know your man's had to find you the best possible alternative, and we have done that with drafters.com. Today we are doing a $1 buy-in best ball draft. For those of y'all that are unfamiliar with best ball, what that means is you only draft the team. No in-season management. It automatically starts the best players at each position each week. Normal lineup configurations, probably without kickers, probably without defensive players. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to start a league. So drafters.com, create a contest, NFL, best ball, next league name, YouTube vids like you read about. Entrance, we're going 12 teamer today. One dollar buy in, we'll keep it simple. Number of winners, three. What's the best part about drafters compared to draft, at least, is that it's ridiculously customizable in terms of how you want the payouts to be. So I'm gonna go 65, 23, 12. So first place gets seven dollars and nine cents. Doesn't fucking matter. Hit next draft, live snake drafts, fast picks, 40 seconds per pick. So we can hurry this up and you guys can get some value from your boy. Roster and scoring settings. So this is what I'm talking about. Customizable. We can do super flex. We can do two quarterback leagues. We can do standard leagues. We can do fucking six defensive starters. We're not going to do that, though. We're going to take defenses out because I hate playing with defenses and kickers in best ball. We're definitely going to throw a couple flexes in there. We're going to do a one quarterback league because most of the stuff that I've covered so far has been super flex. So I know there's still a lot of y'all that play one quarterback leagues out there. We're going to go one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end. We'll go two flexes. We'll go half PPR. And again, you can customize the scoring settings down to like the stats and stuff, which makes this shit really, really cool, um, which is a huge upgrade over draft because they only had one option for leagues. We'll hit next. We'll hit submit, join, and I am in. Basically, you could just take the URL. Now I'm going to post it into Discord. So we got a monster Discord set up for everyone in the Big Dogs Gotta Eat community. Super fucking active. I'm basically, I told them I was like at 2.15, we are posting the link to draft in here. So I just threw the link into Discord. We got about a thousand people within the Big Dogs community on there. That is where I'm posting my mock drafts. They have tons of different channels in there. They have mock, if you want to, if you want to jump into a dynasty league, if you want to get into these mock drafts with me, you're going to have to sign up for the Big Dogs Discord. Completely free to sign up. I should, uh, I should mention there. Uh, completely free to sign up. And it's just a place where you guys can all kind of talk about shit together and you don't need me to be there. So I posted the link in there and it looks like this bad boy is about to start because that shit filled up real quick. Like I said, the BDGE Discord is popping. Now we got to wait a little while for the draft to start. We enter the draft room. Hell yeah, you guys are the best. Look how quick they fucking signed up for this. All right, so I will be drafting from the nine spot. Cool, 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 cool. Um, oh, that drafter's promo is kind of in the way. Let me drag that down a little bit. Beep bop, beep bop, boop, beep bop. All right, so again, uh, these are money drafts. So I usually throw out, you know, I'll do a lot of slow drafts where it's like an email draft or a certain amount of time per pick. And uh, basically you could jump into like five or seven different slow drafts. So you don't necessarily have to be on the platform or the app all day to pay attention to it. And uh, that's how kind of we run things at Big Dogs. I'll start like five different $1 best ball drafts. I'll throw out the links a couple times and you'll probably get into one or two. So if you do want to draft with me, make sure you sign up for the Big Dogs Discord. Again, absolutely free. Throw 10 bucks into your drafters account. Drafters.com. If you use the promo code BDGE, you will get 50% Right away, you could use it immediately. So if you throw 10 bucks in there, you're going to get 15 to play with. There you go. That's 15 best ball drafts. That will get you through April. I promise you. Sup? Sup, Western? Sup? That's the other thing, too. This has a chat function, which draft did not. So again, for best ball, for y'all, those of y'all that are new, this is the starting lineup right here. Quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, two flexes. However, you draft the team of 18 players, okay? So the software automatically... Software automatically 
puts the best player each week in. So it's a little bit different than you would normally attack drafts, but it's really not that much different. Like you might, you know, value a guy like not necessarily Deshaun Jackson this year, but just in general, a guy who's a little more boom bust, you might like a little more in best ball. But I draft pretty much according to how I would normally draft in my leagues based on the team makeups that I have. So we got Shaky up at the 101. We got Jack Lantern at two. We got George BD. How fucking disrespectful George is throwing the BDGE name in there. I love it. Um, so yeah, you could sign up on drafters.com. They also have an app on both iOS and Android, which I will link down below if you want to join. And you get emails as the picks are coming in. You get emails as soon as your draft is starting. Uh, so this is really exciting for everybody out there that wants to start drafting a little bit. It's a lot of fun. So we have C-Mac, we have Saquon Barkley at the 101 and the 102. No surprises there. That will be the unanimous, probably first two picks in every league. That's maybe not full PPR. Um, if it's super flex, obviously you could see maybe Lamar or Patrick Mahomes sneak into the top two or three. If it's full PPR, I could see you making a case for Michael Thomas at maybe two, but I still don't think uh, I fuck around that much. All right. So pretty standard here. Thomas, Ezekiel Elliott. I don't know if I, I'm going with Ezekiel Elliott there at the four spot only because we lose Travis Frederick. And that was a big piece of their offensive line, of course. So Zeke is probably the last running back in that top tier that I want a piece of. And in that top tier, I would probably have C-Max, Saquon Barkley, Dalvin Cook. Kamara would probably be in there. And we're seeing all the running backs just absolutely fly off the board. So uh, I pretty much get my pick at wide receiver here. Unfortunately, Thomas is off the board there. I'm not looking at tight ends because this is not a tight end premium league. Running backs, uh, Jones is not a guy I'm looking at in the first round. I do like Joe Mixon a little bit. I'm still a little bit nervous about his pass catching uh, his pass catching prowess, not prowess. I know he's a fucking excellent pass catcher, but in terms of the way this team has used him, man, they, they just have not used him in the pass catching capacity that he should be used in. Um, but you know, with Gio possibly a cut candidate, we're going to say fuck it and run with Joe, Joe Mixon at the one Oh nine. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he gets more passing work because like, listen, he's a guy that we know can catch the ball. But everything we've seen is showing that they're just not throwing him the ball. Like last year, even they were a horrible team. They didn't win any goddamn games, and they're still not throwing him the ball. Like they're down a lot of points. They need to catch up, even though maybe they were just tanking, and that's really what it came down to. But Joe Mixon was not involved in the passing game. His targets and his receptions dipped last year despite playing in fewer games. So I'm just really talking shit about my first overall pick. Again, throughout these mock drafts, though, I think the best idea or the best plan of attack when you are consuming my content would would kind of be listen to what I'm saying just like the basic player analysis not necessarily like oh my god Nick's such a dumb fucking idiot for taking Joe Mixon at 109 because a lot of the times I look like a dumb fucking idiot because I'm trying to concentrate on you I'm trying to concentrate on all the naked women in the kitchen over there I'm trying to concentrate on giving you value through my player analysis so I got a lot of shit going on I have the opposite of naked women in my kitchen I just have literally no one um, okay, so we have back-to-back -back Packers, man. I would definitely go with Devontae over Aaron Jones there. Um, I really hope Josh Jacobs falls to me, unless he already went off the board, did he? No, he didn't. Come on, John. Don't take Jacobs, you fucking motherfucker. I'm actually like, I know you guys are going to shit on me for this, but I just started doing my write-up for next Thursday's video. So next Thursday's video probably won't be a mock draft. Next Thursday's video is probably going to be a breakdown of all the sophomore running backs. I think those are probably the most intriguing fantasy players of all next year. Like the toughest ones to get an analysis on are these sophomore running backs. Josh Jacobs, Miles Sanders, Devin Singletary, David Montgomery, Darrell Henderson. Like there's a lot of excitement around those guys. And I think the range of outcomes for that just group of players is going to be fucking crazy. And the more research I do, the more I really like Jacobs. I think one of the really underrated pieces of that offense which I did not expect to happen was that their offensive line was absolutely fucking baller they were the uh, sixth ranked overall offensive line in the NFL last year per football outsider sixth ranked run blocking line and they were actually not bad the year before I think they were like 13th or 14th but they took a big step up and uh, anytime you have a really good rusher like Josh Jacobs, and again, guys, I'll, I'll fucking you, know, you can shit on me all you want but my analysis on Jacobs was that he never handled the workload I didn't know if he'd be able to do it in the NFL. I still don't, to be honest with you. I, I really still don't. Um, but we'll see. I think that 
they came out and they were just like, we didn't want to give him too much on his plate. We didn't want to, you know, have him be have have to pass block on every down, have to catch everything. So everything we've heard so far this offseason is that the next step in Josh Jacobs' evolution, the Josh Jacobs evolution story starts now, is that he's going to get more involved in the passing game. And um, and if that's the case, I mean, Vegas right now has him penned at an over-under of 1,650 all-purpose yards. I would be very surprised if Jacobs does not finish the year inside the top five in terms of rushing yards. If he gets more targets, he's going to be a fucking monster next year, man. Um, that offensive line. I also think that, like... It, it's going to be really, this is going to be a really tough, you know, I won't even really go into it because I'm going to talk about it a lot in next Thursday's video when I break down the, uh, when I break down the sophomore running backs, but this is going to be a, a very tricky off season given that, you know, with new offenses, new players, new personnel, new coaches, they don't have the time that they're putting together to integrate everything. So like, we're not going to get a lot of accurate beat reports because we don't have beat reporters at training camp. So all the shit that's hyped up about stuff is just not really there, you know? Um, so it's going to be hard to get a real realistic read on what's going on with these players. Like we're not going to be able to get all of these reports that, Oh, Josh Jacobs is, you know, playing in every down role. Oh, he's catching so many passes at practice. Like we could really trust him and shit, you know? So it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be a little bit tough. Uh, the other reason I went with running back, running back is I've done a few drafts so far. I've done three FFPC best ball drafts, which are $35 drafts. So the ADP is very accurate in there. And I've done like three or four, uh, best ball drafts on drafters as well. And what I'm seeing is like, if you don't get two running backs early, like by the time the fifth or sixth round hits, it is fucking scarce. And by the time that hits, like the wide receivers are beautiful. So right now it's super early. And I know we got like fucking 87,000 more days until we actually start drafting. But as usual, the early strategy seems to be get your running backs early because they fall off a fucking cliff quick. What else do we got here? So we had the first quarterback going off the board. That's going to be another really interesting thing to see where like Lamar Jackson and Pat Mahomes go. Uh, I think Lamar Jackson is pretty worthy of an early round pick. I'm not really sure I'm, I'm really about to buy into it though. I probably wouldn't start my team with that just because I feel comfortable later on in the draft going with like a Daniel Jones, Minshew, Matt Ryan stack there at the very end of the round. So see, I have my two running backs now and like look at the running backs that are left on the board. Do you feel confident about any of these guys really? Not really. So I'm glad I did that because you still have guys like Odell Beckham, Cortland Sutton, Juju in the third round. Uh, not in love with any of the tight ends here, especially not in tight end premium. So this is where I'll just, I'll just stack like fucking eight wide receivers in a row. AJ Brown, Odell Beckham. Uh, I'll probably go at Odell. Th that's a really tough tier to figure out too. You have the Odell's, Keenan's, AJ Brown's, Juju, Cortland Sutton. Like this whole thing is just, it's kind of a mess of just like beautiful wide receiver twos. Um, I'll go with Odell there only. I, I'm not really nervous to take him there now that I got my two stud running backs up front because you're going to be able to get like three or four top 15 wide receivers over the next few rounds because now everyone else is going to be scrambling for their running backs. I also don't hate the idea of getting, I, I see Mark Andrews falling a lot. Like he's being very devalued compared to the other tight ends. Like you see, uh, Kittle going off at 17, you see Travis Kelsey going off at 24, and there's a good chance that I see Mark Andrews drop to me at 40, which is, you know, 16 picks later than the tight end two. So if I'm getting at him a round and a half, two round difference, obviously, you know, he probably doesn't have the upside that a Kelsey does, but I mean, Mark Andrews just came off his first like realistic breakout year and he, he's played on like 45% of the snaps. Now Hayden Hurst is gone his playtime is only going to get a big uptick. So yes, his touchdown total might drop just because the overall passing touchdown percentage from Lamar Jackson was unheard of. It was like over 9%. That's going to drop. But I still think he's a main red zone target. They don't have a lot of options in the passing game. So Andrews is still uh, only going to get better. He's a, he's a very, very, very good elite athlete at the tight end position. And um, he's still going to be a main cog in that offense. So Andrews here in the fourth round, I definitely do not hate. I'll see what wide receivers are there. I mean, you know what I mean? Like I still, like if Cortland Sutton falls to me here, I'll be ecstatic about that. I love Thielen. I love Cooper Cup. I love Calvin Ridley. Like look at this fucking mid-round wide receiver value. It is out of control. I feel like Thielen in the fourth round is like, like how is that, a, how is that not a trap? Like it's too good to be true, you know? That's where the name Fade the Public comes from. It's like when things look too juicy, the entire public is going to be on it. And that's when you know you got to get the fuck out. Oh, I love Cortland Sutton too. So since I got Odell, I think he's a little bit risky. I'm probably going to go with Thielen because I think he's a little bit safer than Cortland Sutton is. We all love Sutton as a talent. 
but he's not necessarily a guy that you're expecting to catch like seven or eight passes a game on a consistent basis. He does have Drew Locke throwing him the ball. Um, and Drew Locke, sure, he showed some signs, but for the most part, he was he was kind of shitty in like four of the five games that he started. And Sutton's numbers did fall off when Locke was under center. So as much as we like the upside of Sutton, I, I don't know... I don't know how much of that upside comes to fruition this year. Um, and I could sound fucking dumb saying that. He might end up as like a top seven wide receiver at the end of the year. Very, very possible. But since my first wide receiver that I picked in Odell was a little bit shaky, you know, we don't know what the situation in Cleveland is going to be with Stefanski now. They're going to be much more run heavy than they were last year. Uh, we don't know if the volume is going to be there for Odell. So I really like the consistency that we're probably going to get Adam Thielen out of Adam Thielen now that Stefan Diggs is gone. They really have no other choice but to give Thielen like 10 fucking targets a game. So love that. Love Cooper Cup there. Love Sutton. See, this is what I mean. Like if you, if, if you fade wide receivers early, the value in these middle rounds is insane. Like there's no way I would want some of these running backs over some of the wide receivers. Though I think like a lot of them probably have some decent upside. Uh, I like Singletary. I think I think Gordon is like sneaky, a sneaky good bet. I think him and Lindsey are both sneaky good bets to like provide pretty good value out of the backfield. I just got uh, Philip Lindsey in one of my other best ball drafts at like the eight eleven, and I understand like most people immediately start to write off Mel, uh, Lindsey as soon as Melvin Gordon got there. But yo, like Lindsey's a better runner than Melvin Gordon, just straight up as a pure running back. It's Lindsey over Gordon. Gordon will end up with more passing work and overall more touches, but don't be surprised if like by week eight, Lindsey and Gordon are splitting carries 12 to 11, 10 to 11, 12 to 12, 13 to 11 or some shit like that. And Lindsey starts taking more. I just think he's the more talented player overall in terms of pure runner. And, uh, and I think, you know, he's just showed us that he's a fucking bowler and he's going to get it done week in and week. There's no way a guy that's as good as Philip Lindsay on the ground just gets completely phased out of an offense. Not when he's 24 years old. It's just not going to happen. So this is one of the very few situations where I'm like, oh, I'm going to take the second running back because of the value here. Because I actually think Lindsay also has upside. Most people, when they when they go down that tangent of like, I'm going to take this guy instead of this guy, the, the second running back because he has value. That second running back... If you, if you think of almost any running back by committee where you're getting the second running back, that second running back almost never has upside. Like, there's no fucking point of drafting the guy who's, yes, might get eight carries or something and score once every three weeks or some shit, but you're never putting him in your lineup. Okay, sorry. Another tangent from me. George really liking that Chris Carson action, huh? Carson kind of makes me nervous taking him best ball right now. There's some guys I'm just going to stay away from, especially at the running back position prior. Damn, Mark Andrews fell to 50, huh? Some guys that are I'm just going to fade at the running back position prior to the NFL draft uh, because we don't know what the situation is going to be for the veteran running backs. Like, Seattle's almost definitely going to draft a running back this year. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if the Chiefs did, though. I like Damian Williams. David Johnson is just a terrible fucking player overall. I'm sorry, Shaky. I wouldn't touch David Johnson with a 257-foot ladder. Georgie, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when it come for George? Ertz. Ertz is another tricky one, too. Uh, I, I don't know. As someone who owned Ertz last year, I really feel like Ertz was not good until everyone died on the Eagles. So he's likely a guy that if you're going to be able to get Andrews and Ertz at the same spot, I'm, I'm likely just going to go with Andrews. And if I don't get him, I'll probably wait on the position until much later. Because unlike other years, I think they're really... Also, the other thing with drafters is their ADPs are not really synced up at all. So when you're looking at rankings and shit, one, you could find like all of the rookies kind of just like hiding. Was Dobbins already picked? I guess Dobbins already went off the board. Uh, but most of the rookies you could find, like, hiding in the rankings somewhere. Am I nuts? Did these guys already go off the board? DeAndre Swift. I don't know. Maybe the search function ain't working right now. Cam Akers. Hello. I feel like Akers was, like, all the way. Oh, fuck. That's my turn, huh? Anyways, we're at pick 50, what, seven right now? We'll see what, see. And there's just still so many good wide receivers on the board here. 
Gallup, Samuel, Tyler Boyd, Devontae Parker, T.Y. Hilton. Ugh. Like, I feel like I should take Parker here, but I don't really have a lot of faith in him. I kind of like Hilton, man. The guy's a fucking warrior, and he'll probably play better with Phillip Rivers under center than he did with um, Jacoby Brissett. I like Robert Woods, too. Like, what happens if Brandon Cooks gets traded at the draft? I like Robert Woods regardless. But if Brandon Cooks gets traded at the draft, I mean, it's fucking slam dunk. So... A faded wide receiver for the first two rounds, and I still ended up with my team's on the right here, by the way, if you can't see. Joe Mixon, Josh Jacobs, Odell, Thielen, Robert Woods. And I could continue to stack up these wide receiver twos. And again, this best ball platform automatically starts the best three wide receivers. So if I draft six wide receiver twos or six top 30 wide receivers, like three of them are probably going to put up top 15 weeks each week. And I don't have to worry about doing the sit start stuff. So. That's what makes best ball so fun. And that's why y'all should sign up for the BDGE Discord, which is linked below in the description as well in the comment section. Completely free to join. You could talk all fucking football all day long to get you through this quarantine with the homies. And in there, I will post all my best ball drafts, the links to them. So head over to drafters.com or download the drafters app. When you deposit, use that promo code BDGE. And guess what? You're going to get $5. You can get big $5. $5 in this economy. This economy, $5 will go a long way. Sorry. I got to answer this text right quick. Oh, my God. I think I'm going to start acquiring companies within the fantasy space. I wish I was kidding. I'm fucking, I'm not kidding at all. I think if we just cut out, oh, T.Y., fall to me, baby. Fall to me, baby. I feel like I thank God this is not Dynasty. I should take like a younger. I, I've just been talking Dynasty all off season for the last like four months. That like taking Ty over uh, Debo or Tyler Boyd or someone right now just feels sacrilegious. Oh, there's Dobbins. I feel like I was looking for them. Where the fuck are we? So the other thing about about uh, drafters right now is they just launched their app. So there are a few things that are a little. A little turkey turkey on here. Hold on one sec, sorry. Oh man. A lot of good value here. Like Evan Ingram's still on the board to pick 64. I think I'm just gonna fade the tight end position again. Cause again, like I was saying before, like you can get guys like Ebron real late. You can get guys like Ian Smith. Where is Ian Smith? Is he even fucking on here? TJ Hawkinson. Yeah, they got the rankings all fucked up. So this is the time to go win some money, people. I'm just gonna take TY Hilton. Call it a day at wide receiver figure out quarterback and tight end. I mean, you're only starting one, so. Um, and plus, there's two flexes. So any of the wide receivers that kind of overflow into there, they'll get started. I forget what the fuck I was saying right before that, though. Oh, yeah, we're going to start uh, acquiring companies. We're going to start cutting out the middlemen. I've, I've decided how we're going to attack the fantasy football space and how we're going to become a monopoly. So right now, the products and services we offer basically are the draft guide and then we make our money through like affiliates like this where you guys sign up and you help me out a lot by the way anytime you use my promo code for something it is a huge help to me and i really appreciate anyone that supported the brand by the way just want to throw that out there first and foremost um and then sponsorship deals so products merch on bigdogsfantasy.com affiliates sponsorships what we want to start to do is one offering you guys more products and services but Obviously, we want to make sure that it's a very high value. We don't just want to start throwing products out on the fucking market just to do so. We want to make sure that like the what we're giving off is so good that you have no choice but to be like, fuck yeah, I want to give you the money. So I gave both Bunk Bed Breakdowns and Fade the Public a two-year timetable for two products. See, the way you got to look at business is this. You got to understand the value prop that each of your, whether it's a subsidiary or a company or a brand is offering. So with Fade the Public, I understand we go nowhere near in-depth on analysis as bunk bed breakdowns, right? Where me, Mike, and Noah really dive into like the whole dynasty numbers. That's not me, Animal, and Snacks' game. Why you guys like Fade the Public is because we're fucking morons on Fade the Public. And you guys like a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff that we do and just showing like our friendship. So I told Animal and Snacks, two years, we're going to create a cookbook, We've done a lot of kitchen scenes. We've we've shown animal and snacks cooking and, and doing a bunch of shit like that. So I told them to, they're going to create a video cookbook of them doing, of them making, uh, animal sense pictures of him making late night cookies all the time. They look so fucking good. Cookies, 
different styles of pizza. They're all going to be like exotic, weird flavors. So pizza, cookies, it's going to be a video cookbook. We're going to make a very select few real hard copies of the books. Obviously, you'll get Animal and Snacks' signature. So that's two-year plan for that. And then for the bunk bed breakdowns, I told Mike and Noah, two-year process, uh, we are going to create our own dynasty trade calculator. Now, I'm not unpractical. I understand how much work will go in behind the scenes. Tons of algorithms and tons of formulas and shit we'll need to have. We'll need to create a website for it. We'll need to have a very functional website, probably create an app for it. But those are the two different products that we offer. Completely fucking different, but they're on brand to each of the audiences that we are servicing. And what I mean by cut out the middle, man, I'm sorry, I've gotten way off topic here, but I've just, I've had so much caffeine today and I've been in, I I put the fucking blinders on. I went in CEO mode today and we're just moving chess pieces. I stood above the whole big dogs team and we're moving chess pieces out here. The, um, the cutting out the middleman part is this, like we're going to start, we're going to look at all the products and services offered in the fantasy space. And because we have an audience, or in two years' time, we're going to have a very big audience, we have the leverage. Like, look at any product or service offered in the space, right? Who are those people offering their product or service to? They're offering it to my audience, or people like my audience. Most of them will be in my audience in two or three years' time, right? So if I create a similar competitive product, the same product, and I offer it, Why would anyone that's in my audience pick the other person's product or service? They won't. They already trust me. They already have loyalty to me. So we're going to start cutting out middlemen. And we're going to start fucking monopolizing on this industry. Mark my fucking words. I'm going to play this clip in two or three years time when we start doing fucking mergers and acquisitions and buying companies within the space that already have the infrastructure for it. All right. Let's talk some fantasy football. I'm so sorry. Those were fucking ridiculous. So I had T.Y., then we saw J.K. Dobbins go off the board. Dak Prescott, Will Fuller, Jarvis Landry. Now, right, let's talk about uh, Will Fuller a little bit. Now, guys, there's, there's a difference between being a wide receiver one and being a wide receiver one. You know what I'm saying? Will Fuller ain't a wide receiver one. He is technically the wide receiver one in Houston right now. He will be probably about six or seven games next year. But he, he's not a... You need to be a legit wide receiver one in order to command wide receiver one type targets. Very few instances do you see a guy get shoved into the wide receiver one role and succeed only because he's the only guy there. There's no way Houston comes away from this draft without Bill O'Brien executing 98 horrible trades. But besides the point, they have to come away with at least one one wide receiver, if not two wide receivers. And I just don't... Yes, Will Fuller might lead the team in targets, but he'll never be up to that DeAndre Hopkins level of 140, 150, 170 targets. Regardless as if they even don't draft somebody in the draft. It just ain't happening. So Will Fuller, like just the fact that he's not an alpha combined with the injury concerns, I'm not a huge fan of Will Fuller in fantasy this year. So I'll probably be fading him. I love Cam Akers, though, and I need to find where the fuck he is. Let me see what running backs are on the board. See, Philip Lindsay's still on the board. I might think about him next round if he's still there. Wes Hills, what are you doing up here? This is, oh, man. So Evan Ingram almost fell to me there. I would have been really excited about that. If I remember correctly, and I'm a fucking psycho for remembering this, I believe Cam Akers is at like four. No, I lied. Okay, never mind. Cam, where are you, bro? Drafters, we, we, we got to... Uh, we got to fix this search function. Oh, there you go. Okay. He's at 1291. Great ranking. So I'm going to grab Cam Akers here. And this is the end of the sixth, seventh round, I believe. Seven, ten, seven, eleven. I love Cam Akers from a pure pure talent standpoint. As of right now, he's my rookie 103. Um, if he lands in like any situation where he's getting 12 to 15 touches, which I think is pretty much the floor for Akers, the boy's going to explode. I love the upside he brings this year. And as my running back three, I don't necessarily need like someone that I can depend on for consistency. But if he does explode and hit his peak, which I think he can, hopefully I'm obviously gambling a little bit because we haven't had the NFL draft yet. But if he hits that upside, Cam Akers is going to be a fucking league winner this year, man. The kid is so talented. And for those of y'all that don't know, he played at Florida State. And uh, and Florida State's offensive line was so bad. I'm trying to pull up a tweet from Graham Barfield, who does a great job scouting rookie running backs it says just how bad was cam Akers' offensive line at fsu i wish i could oh you know what maybe i can show you the tweet on here oh bet i can cool graham barfield how you darn just how bad was cam Akers' offensive line at fsu i think i'm up 
soon, so I want to make sure I don't miss my pick. Uh, probably should have went with a tight end there, huh? Because there were still some really good ones on the board. Tyler Higby's I haven't taken a quarterback yet. I'm fine with that. I kind of like Josh Allen here, though. Uh, is there anything like really good value on the board? Not really. I don't love any of the wide receivers left. I kind of like Mike Williams out in L.A., but they don't really have a quarterback, so maybe I just lied about that. No, no one I love in flex, so this is probably when I need to start looking at other pieces. Like, do I like one of the tight ends or do eh, – I'm probably going to go with Josh Allen here. I like the week-to-week upside he has based on his rushing ability. And I know that he was actually way more of a floor play, and I tweeted this out a lot last year, and we'll, we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, just how bad was Cam Akers' offensive line at FSU? I just want you guys to understand, like, the um, – the, the 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 context of the context of each of these rookies and then kind of go from there. Merchantville, what the fuck are you calling about? Uh 0.57 yards blocked per attempt is the worst in yards created history since 2016. 0.37 yards blocked per attempt on inside carries is second worst since 16. Acres was contacted at or behind the line of scrimmage on 30% of his rushes, most in the class. His line was so damn bad, and he still ended up with like 1,100 yards. I believe it, it was some crazy stat, like 950 of his 1,100 yards came after contact. You watch this guy play. His feet are so quick. He's 217 pounds. Let's bring up the player profile. Let's do a goddamn correct analysis on Cam Akers and do him some justice. 5'10", 217, workhorse size. Kid's not even 21 years old yet. 90th percentile college dominator. Kick and catch the ball, 80th percentile college, college target share. Look at the wheels. 447 at 217 fucking pounds. Yes, the yards per carry is going to be the blemish on his resume. But again, this guy created everything that he had by himself. Nothing to do with the offensive line. They did him no favors. That entire team got fucking wiped out because of how bad they were. They fired the coach. They fired all of the coaches. The quarterback is gone. Cam Akers was the only positive thing that came out of that damn offense this year. Could be lying. I didn't really follow them, so they might have had a good wide receiver. I don't know. I'm probably lying. Cam Akers is a goddamn beast. I hope he lands somewhere good. All right. Also, I want to talk about David Montgomery for a sec because I tweeted this out the other day, and I wanted to know people's thoughts on him because, again, I'm starting to write up. Anytime I start writing up a post for, like, my new video with the sophomore running backs being next week, I start getting really into the research, and I always tweet out, like, the best nuggets that I find from from each player. Uh, what did I put? From each player. So make sure you're following me on Twitter if you want to see this stuff. Basically, I was like, is he dead from a fantasy perspective? He wasn't efficient. I know if you watched him last year, you were like, oh, fuck, David Montgomery, huge fucking bust. And from where you picked him in fantasy, absolutely. At no point did I ever say you should have drafted him at, in the third round or whatever. Uh, I kind of liked him at the end of the fourth, early fifth. But if you started to reach up for him, you absolutely got fucking burned. So I said he wasn't efficient by any stretch of the imagination. But he still finished the season with close to 1,100 total yards, seven touchdowns behind the 29th ranked run blocking line. Obviously, they had a fucking carousel at quarterback as well. And when I look back at other rookies, like Melvin Gordon had an awful, awful rookie year, consist, uh, statistically speaking. And Le'Veon was not far off, although he didn't miss some time. So I think just looking at a pure statistical standpoint from a rookie running back is the bad way to do it, especially when you put context behind how bad the line was, how bad the quarterback play was, uh, and all those things. And he didn't have that bad of raw numbers. So yes, he'll leave a sour taste in the mouths of people that did draft him last year. But I think there's still a little bit of value to be had with David Montgomery. Like, for instance, you know, if you do end up fading the running back and you need, like, a low-end RB2 flex play, I think depending on where he goes off the board, if he starts going too early, where do you go? 74. Uh, so that's, like, that's that, that is that the seventh round? No, that's the sixth round. Six times 12 is 72. So it is a seventh round. That's a 702. That's the other thing with drafters. I told them they need to put a round, a slide, where it tells you the round that we're in. So they're working on that. So if you guys do join and you have any suggestions, uh, make sure you like tweet them at me because I have a, an email draft that I send over to them semi-frequently telling them updates that they should make. All right, so now is probably when I need to look at the tight ends. Otherwise, it will pass me by. Uh, Higby seems to be a very big part of that offense. So Higby's a guy that, I mean, compared to the other guys on this list right now, I feel like I'm stealing Higby. That's kind of beautiful. Um, apparently, all the reports I've seen are that he is going to continue to be a big piece of this offense. I like Gerald Everett because he's got a great athletic profile, but it's pretty clear that... Uh, Higby was that 
motherfucker, as the kids would say. Let's see what news we got on Mr. Tyler Higby. Mm-hmm. I could have sworn I saw something that was like a report out of Rams camp. Top people you follow. Projects as the number six fantasy tight end in 2020 per PFF. I don't know about all that. But he's definitely a top 10 ranked fantasy tight end. So I feel really good about getting him all the way down here. I feel real good. And now I compare him with uh, a guy like Goddard, who has elite upside if something happens to Ertz. I don't hate Gusecki. Um, Eric Ebron with the touchdown, week-to-week upside. Noah Fants all the way down here. Ooh, I like Jack Doyle, too. I didn't realize he was down here. OJ Howard. Yeah, so there's still a lot of guys on the board that I could see myself taking. I'm not going to get overly excited about Irv Smith. He's still behind Kyle Rudolph. Could take the next step. Ooh, Ian Thomas is there, too. So there, this is why I wait on tight end, because I think there are, like, two or three valuable guys that you could still plug in and feel pretty confident with in your uh, in your tight end slot. So I'm good stacking up my the beasts of the core of your team. Uh, what else we got going on? So for two weeks from today, we got the NFL draft kicking off. We are going. We're going to be doing something pretty fucking cool for the NFL draft. So what we're going to do, me, Mike, and Noah for bunk bed breakdowns, we're going to live stream the draft. So obviously everyone's going to be watching on their computer. Uh, and I don't think we're going to have the TV rights or whatever. Like we're going to be able to actually overlay the draft content on our videos, but we're going to be fucking announcing the draft and live streaming as if we are presenting the draft. Let me make my pick right quick. Um, all right. So I have one over running back, one over wide receiver. So there goes the two starting flex guys Did I take a second quarterback yet. No, I didn't, but there's still some good fucking options on the board. Oh, no, I got to get my second tight end, I think, before it evaporates there. Goddard, Kasicki, Goddard, Kasicki. I like Goddard a little bit more. I like Goddard a little bit more. I trust the offense a lot more. I trust the Eagles, and I trust Carson Wentz more than I do Miami. And I know there were reports about Kasicki being more involved as like this big slot guy. And I think I covered this in one of my recent videos. I guess I didn't tweet it out. Um, But supposedly he's going to be the big slot guy. And that's going to get everyone excited, of course, from a fantasy perspective. However, I look back and there wasn't a single tight end who ran more of their snaps or routes from the slot than Gasicki did last year. He was already the big slot tight end guy. He had a, he did have a mini breakout, but again, everybody on that team got hurt, right? Preston Williams got hurt. Albert Wilson got hurt. Jakeem Grant got hurt. It was literally just him and Devontae Parker vying for targets in that offense. Uh, so I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm, a, I'm on the buyer beware side when it comes to Gasicki. So I'd rather have Goddard who legitimately has top three upside if something were to happen to to Ertz. And Ertz is getting up there in age. He's not injury prone by any means, but I like to keep telling myself that. It's probably the, a bad strategy. Uh, Nick, great content. When does a rookie draft guy drop? It's live, baby. Uh, so for those of y'all that are also new to the channel, uh, we create a draft guide every year we create two of them one for rookie and dynasty leagues and one for season long leagues so if you head over to bigdogsdraftguide.com you'll be able to check out more of the stuff that we have on there uh right now the dynasty and rookie guide is completely live and we will be updating it throughout the entire off season we've got our full dynasty rankings loaded between myself noah and mike so you can get all of them on there you know we got uh super flex rankings up right now you could kind of see the top 20 25 right there if you ought to take a little bit of a gander at. And then uh, we've got them down by position. And then we have the rookie rankings there. So we have literally every rookie profile written up. And we break it down by like, it's pretty fucking cool. I'm actually really proud of this, man. We worked really hard on it. And it has so much good info and so much good value in here. We have basically like the top 60 or 70 rookie profiles written up in here. Um, so if you need any help with your dynasty leagues and then we'll be popping out dynasty articles 
as the offseason goes by, we have our top five wide receivers and running backs for next year's class. So if you're looking to trade for, you know, some future rookie picks, we got you covered on who you should be targeting or why you should be trading for those picks because you need to know the value of those players right now. Um, but we will be dropping exclusive articles and mock drafts and stuff that have relevance to dynasty and rookie drafts throughout the entire offseason. Everything will be updated um, throughout the offseason as well as for the season long guide, which will drop in like July. But if you go to bigdogsdraftguide.com slash MKF, because it is sponsored by Monkey Knife Fight, you'll be able to get both of them for just signing up for Monkey Knife Fight. And this video on the page, Big Dog Draft, or bigdogsdraftguide.com slash MKF will explain everything. You literally deposit on Monkey Knife Fight using our promo code BDGE. You will get 100% deposit match bonus on that. And you will literally get both of our draft guides for free. Just play a $2 game on Monkey Knife Fight. I'll get an email once you do that. And bing, bang, boom. Miss Prudence in the room. You are in the draft guide. And uh, you could fucking put some numbers up on me in the best ball drafts. Because you're in my fucking head. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, again, this is why I do not draft quarterbacks in one quarterback leagues. Because you can get a Matt Ryan at pick 1,042. I'm not sure what that number is. So, that's the other thing that we're going to have to uh, fix up there, draft there a little bit. But... For all intents and purposes, man, like, this is a great platform. They've got the aesthetic down. They've got the functionality down. Uh, just a couple quick twerks, and listen, they're up to par with, with draft. So we got Coleman going off here, Hawkinson going off here. So, yeah, I mean, that's the reason. Like, if you want to take Lamar Jackson in the second round, Pat Mahomes in the second or third round, it's like, would you rather have Matt Ryan in the ninth or tenth round? Let's see, three, seven, nine, ten, eleventh round. And then also be able to get like an elite wide receiver or something there. That's what I'd probably do in one quarterback leagues. I don't really play in them often anymore. But if I did, that's how I would attack it. Okay, so we got some quarterbacks still on the board. I feel like Daniel Jones is a perfect best ball quarterback because he's up and down. I, I really like Jared Goff here. Even Baker in the 10th round is a second quarterback. Fine with me. Um, I'm not going to take Jameis Winston because who fucking knows what team he's going to land on. He could end up being landing in Pittsburgh. And Ben could have one more year and then he takes over as that franchise quarterback, but he gives you absolutely nothing right now. So I'm a little less, I'm a little more risk averse when it comes to doing things like in the off season. I want guys that I know are going to be in their position. So I'll go with DJ as my second quarterback. So we were able to stack, uh, who do we have? Josh Allen and Daniel Jones, two young upside quarterbacks with a really nice rushing floor. Love that for best ball. I might fuck around and take like a third quarterback later, later in the draft, maybe like a and Drew Locke, or even fuck around and take a, a Nick Foles because he'll drop really far. Um, but for right now, the lineup is looking like Joe Mixon, Josh Jacobs, Cam Akers at running back. We have Odell, Adam Thielen, Robert Woods, T.Y. Hilton at wide receiver. Tight end, we have Tyler Higbee and Dallas Goddard. Quarterback again, Josh Allen, Daniel Jones. So I, I'm really liking how the team's turning out so far. We are through one, two, three, four, fives. Ten rounds, ten picks for me. So this will go through eighteen rounds. <clears throat> oh boy, it's gonna be a long ass video. Oh, I forgot to tell you what I was talking about with the NFL draft. So uh, we are gonna live stream through all three nights of the NFL draft: Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So if you want to just hang out with us and watch all the fucking nonsense that goes through our heads as the picks are being made, that will be on this YouTube channel. So make sure you're subscribing if you do want to hang out with us during it. We'll be doing we'll basically be just lying about all defensive analysis because I don't look at any defensive players when it comes to the draft. Uh, I've supposedly, I've heard Isaiah Simmons is pretty good. That's about the extent of my knowledge when it comes to rookie draft picks on the defensive side. But we will be doing our best fantasy breakdowns as the draft goes on. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to live stream like throughout the entire, say like the first round happens, we'll live stream all Thursday night. And then at the end of it, we will do a real, not with you guys, but we'll do behind the scenes. We'll do an actual recap video of round one for fantasy and then have that up for the next morning. If any of you guys just want to catch like the recap of what happened fantasy wise, and we'll do that for all three nights. And then as soon as the draft wraps up, we got our fucking work cut out for us for the draft guide because we have a section in each rookie profile outlining, um, what their fantasy outlook is going to be for the 2020 season. So shit's going to get real in a couple weeks. Um, so don't fucking at me. Don't tweet me. Don't email me. Don't send me nudes. Don't do nothing. Because I'm fucking busy. All right, we're back on the clock. Got my two quarterbacks. Got my two tight ends. Unless there's crazy value somewhere, I probably am going to go right back to positional players. Do I love anyone here? 
Uh, oh boy, it is ugly down here. Oh, me Cole is a nice fucking pick. I like him in the eleventh round. A lot of upside there at wide receiver. Do I think he goes bonkers? I don't know. I mean, they have Demarcus Robinson coming back. They have Sammy Watkins coming back. I will go with me Cole if I can get back to him before the timer goes. I got him. Yeah. So that's the only thing a little bit confusing about this website is that the rankings are a little crazy. So you will have to uh, kind of scavenge through to make sure you're not missing on any good values. I like Nikhil Harry down here. I saw him somewhere right there. Boom. I still love him as a prospect. I think he's super talented. Obviously, last year he had worst-case scenario. A lot of shit went wrong for him. When you enter the league with a uh, oh, great pick right there with Clyde edwards helaire I forgot he was still on the board. When you enter the league with an injury as a rookie, wide receiver, like those are always going to end in problems. Your rookie year is usually going to be shot. So uh, I still believe in him as a prospect. Obviously, I can't be as high on him as I was going into last year. But Nikhil Harry is a guy that you're able to get now in 11th or 12th rounds. There goes Harden. Good pick, my friend. Georgie. Georgie takes Baker. George is a huge Cleveland fan, so uh, make sure you go follow him on Twitter and tweet out that his Cleveland Browns are fucking trash and he hasn't won a championship in 32 years. What is his name? George underscore BDGE. Fucking cunt. Yeah, that's him. Look at this. Look at this Cleveland cunt. Look, he's tweeting out Cincinnati, Ohio shit over here. Unbelievable. My app just glitched me out. Yeah, you bench. Uh, but yeah, I would suggest doing this on, on the desktop app if, if I were you drafting. If you're doing a fast draft, at least. Shaky, shaky, bakey. Uh, Tony Pollard down here, I don't hate. You're getting to the point where you're basically only taking backup running backs or rookies. So with backup running backs, I like Justin Jackson, man. Here's the other thing. like When you look at Tony Pollard, there's no, there's no way that him and Zeke are fairly splitting carries, right? Like At the end of the day, he is the running back, the backup running back behind one of the most high-volume running backs in the NFL. That's going to be the case no matter what, right? Um, oh no, Justin Jackson, though, I think we all clearly know that Austin Eckler's splitting time with somebody. Will they take someone in the draft? I don't know. There was a report that I, this, this has been my thought process for a long time. We talked, me and Noah, I think one of the first videos we did this off season was talking about our trade targets and dynasty and how Justin Jackson was a fantastic trade target in dynasty. You can get him as like a nothing throw in. And basically, everything we talked about is, has worked well in our favor. I ain't going to say has slapped because there's a lot of shit that we get wrong. But right here, the Athletics' Daniel Popper reports the Chargers are still very high on third-year running back Justin Jackson. Like, Jackson's good when he gets on the field, man. I wouldn't be surprised if they roll with those two and then maybe take like a fifth or sixth round running back that doesn't mix in too much. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a really big fan of Jackson because while all these other running backs are not guaranteed touches unless an injury – I feel like Jackson is kind of baked into a 10-touch workload. If he scores a touchdown, he's going to end up being like a top 20 running back for you that week. And that's what you're looking for in best ball when you're this late in the drafts, man. So, yeah, I mean, you could keep drafting for injuries, but banking on that usually leaves your team with a fucking terrible floor. And since you're out here winning a dollar and nine cents for third place, like... We want that nine cents profit, baby. We need that shit. Bench. What's NZ Transit sending me customer survey satisfaction? I haven't fucking lived in New Jersey in two years. I got nothing but love for New Jersey, though. For real, for real, for real. For real, for real, for real. For real. All right, who else do we like here? Who else do we like here? I don't like anybody. I fucking hate everybody in fantasy this year, huh? I might fuck around and grab another tight end just because there's some good value on the board. Is Ian Thomas still here? Or he already got taken. I like I like Irv Smith all the way down here. It's just because there's no... After the draft, though, the, the rookie running backs are going to shoot up. I can see Keyshawn Vaughn going high. I can see Darrington Evans going high. I might grab Darrington Evans right now. I really like Darrington Evans. I don't even know if I'm saying it right, to be honest. So I'm a fraud fan, but... I like the kid's game. Yeah, fuck it. I like him more than any of these guys, and I feel like he's going to end up going earlier than everyone expects and be like a nice key piece. All right, we're just not going to load for me. Appreciate that. No, don't want Nico Evans. Ah! 
I'm going to get fucking auto-picked for it. Don't take West Hills. You just took fucking Jeff Driscoll for me? Drafters. Drafters. I'm about to bust a fucking nut. Figu- figuratively speaking. Fuck you, Jack. I don't mean that. I love you. Fuck. Why you got to take Jeff Driscoll for me? Why would you even take Jeff Driscoll when Jameis Winston is on the board? Like the highest rated guy. Why would that guy not be in the fucking queue? Nick talked through his pick again. Fuck. Y'all know me too well. Fuck. All right. Uh, so you want to make sure you don't do that. I don't understand why Jeff Driscoll was on in the queue. Someone explain that to me. Someone explain it to me. Someone in the comment section that knows about fucking algorithms or knows about coding, HTML, CSS. Someone that knows how to pronounce Darrington Evans. Explain to me why the fuck Jeff Driscoll just got picked on my team. I wouldn't pick Jeff Driscoll if it came with my buy-in back to me. I'm upset. I'm upset. All right. Now it's time to fucking ball. You know what we do? No. All right. I'm not going to get ignorant now. I was going to say we we pair the floor with a ceiling like Antonio Brown, but his ass ain't getting signed anywhere. Um. Okay, so we have five wide receivers. We only have three running backs. I should probably grab another running back. Duke Johnson? I don't hate buying Duke Johnson here because David Johnson is terrible. I also, I don't know if I'm, yeah, I like Chase Edmonds a lot. Same kind of argument I made for Justin Jackson. Yo, it would not surprise me if they ended up using, I don't want to say a 1A, 1B, but if Edmonds average 8 to 10 touches a game. Like, I don't think Kenyon Drake will ever get a season where he's getting 20 to 24 touches. I really feel like they're going to work Chase Edmonds in there because he's he's always been good when he's on the field, man. Like, we saw him tear up Snacks' Giants. Tear that shit up. Like, it was me getting out of this quarantine and looking at the first female I find in a bar. I'm going to get real fucking ignorant. When I get out of this fucking shithole, it's not a shithole. I don't know even why I said that. But when I get when I get free, when we're all done serving our sentence, oh man, I hope the entire summer isn't canceled. I really do. See, Neha just fucking timed out, and they gave him Jameis Winston. This is just disrespectful. I feel like someone at Drafters logged in, and they're like, "We know Nick's streaming this right now. We're just gonna." Bomb his fucking show and give him Jeff Driscoll. It's not even good content. I'm just pissed. I'm gonna. I might sue. I'm gonna sue. Lawyer up. Law. Law- everyone in the draft. Lawyer up. Everyone at drafters. Lawyer up. Snacks. Animal. Especially Scott. Lawyer the fuck up. I'm coming. I hope I can serve. I'm gonna serve a subpoena to Jeff Driscoll. Ask him how he snuck into the queue. Had to be fucking invasion of privacy. Breaking and entering into my queue. Yeah, I would hate. I would hate me. Sometimes I feel like... Somebody's watching me. No, sometimes I feel like I'm on my game and I'm like a a good podcaster. And then sometimes I don't understand why any of you guys watch or listen to me. I mean that like very sincerely. Sorry, I'm in my feels today. I don't even know why. We do have a viral piece of content coming out, though. I'm really fucking excited to drop the video. We've been working really hard on it. I'm not going to give anything away, actually. All right, let's talk about some players. So, Okay, so Duke Johnson just went off the board. I would have liked to have, have, uh, have grabbed him. Maybe I should look at players while I'm talking in the middle, right? Instead of timing out when I'm trying to look for players on the clock. Uh, Duke Johnson, my, my, my problem with Duke Johnson is, is that like, if he were going to get touches this year, why the fuck wouldn't they have just given it to him last year? Like, why are they all of a sudden just gonna be like, Oh, now we think Duke can handle a big workload or now we want to get him involved. I can see that if maybe like, they're like, you know, we need to feed someone else because Deandre Hopkins is not here and maybe he gets a little bit more involved, but clearly they were not ever at a point last year where they were like, we want to feature Duke Johnson. We want to make sure he's getting his touches week in and week out. Cause that was not the case. 
So I don't know really why I said I wanted Duke Johnson. Sorry, the early season videos where I just am blabbering are are some of my best actually. I think because it's raw and I have most, I have like my just raw opinion on things. Most of them, I've never been wrong, first of all. So um, I'm excited to see what happens with Minnesota in the draft. What kind of draft capital they got here? Minnesota Vikings draft picks 2020. I want to see where they could realistically start targeting wide receivers. They got to come away with someone else after giving up digs. Round one, they got two first-round picks. How the fuck they... Oh, two first-round picks, a second, two third-round picks. A four, they got a lot of capital. All right, so they're definitely going to target a wide receiver early. Then probably a day one or day two pick. Tier with Thielen, so I guess I'm not about to get too excited about old BC Johnson. Great pick right there, Shaky. Fuck, I forgot Justin Jackson was on the board in my last pick. Okay, 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 okay. So I got five wide receivers, four running backs, three quarterbacks, two tight ends. Uh, and again, you have since we start three wide receivers and we start two flexes, you're probably going to want to not do what I did and take three quarterbacks because the other positions are a little bit more valuable because you do need to start a plethora of them each week. I know you guys like that vocabulary I just threw at you, a plethora. I like Scotty Miller, man. I fucking love Scotty Miller, low-key. Shout out to FB God for that one. Scotty Miller is probably going to play the slot this year for Tampa Bay. And if we know anything about Thomas Brady, he likes them little white boys. I feel like Scott Miller is like the second coming of, let's look at Scotty. Let's look at Scotty. I think he's actually fucking like way more athletic than anyone that New England has been using out of the slot. I actually own a lot of, they have him as Scott, not Scotty. Very mature player profiler. Ooh, best comparable to Tyler Lockett. 5'9", 175. So he's small. He's small for sure. Huge college dominator at Bowling Green. Uh, very early breakout age. You love to see it. Four, four, four speed. Good agility. So he 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 encapsulates that great fucking agile slot receiver for a Tom Brady. I'm I'm targeting. I'm going to be targeting Scotty Miller at the end of this draft if someone doesn't snipe him first. Where is he? Love that Antonio Brown pick. Respect. When you draft Jeff Driscoll, don't come fucking complaining to me. James Washington. 14th, 15th round. I don't hate that. Alan Lazard, he's not really the wide receiver two anymore now that they uh I feel like he could probably beat out Devin Funches. But I don't I don't think that passing volume is high enough to support the running backs, Devonta Adams, and then like a solid another wide receiver. I really don't do I, I really don't see it, man. I might have to go with James Washington just because it's gonna time out and everyone else is fucking terrible on this team. We'll go with James, baby. Four running backs, six wide receivers, two tight ends, three quarterbacks. You guys could probably tell I'm losing steam right now. All the, like, the crazy rankings are throwing me off like a motherfucker. I'll usually end up with, let's see, I'll probably, in, in the quarterback and tight end spots, since you only start one, I usually end up either going two and two, or one of the sides I'll end up with three of them, depending on how late I wait to draft one of them. So, like, for instance, if I end up with, like, a Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes, I'm probably only going to take uh, two quarterbacks. If I end up with uh, Kelsey or or Kittle or Andrews, I'll probably only take two tight ends. Obviously, I'm lying right now because I only took two and I didn't get one of those guys, but you get the point. Um, so it's definitely, a lot. <laughs> so that's just a little strategy I end up doing. Cause I like to get as many skill players as I possibly can. Good pick with Rager respect. Uh, who are the other rookies? I don't hate Keyshawn Vaughn. I think he is someone with three down ability. And if he can get the draft capital, he's going to be a fucking beast. I don't know if he's going to get the draft capital though, but I'll still take the chance on him. I like taking the chances on rookie running backs now. Because once the NFL draft happens, as soon as one of these guys, like getting Akers in the 6th or 7th, getting Keyshawn Vaughn in the 14th or whatever, if Keyshawn Vaughn ends up as the one in Tampa Bay, you know, he becomes like a 5th round pick. And if he doesn't, you know, if he ends up in a shitty situation where he's like a 4th round pick for the fucking Dolphins after they already took DeAndre Swift or something, whatever. You wait, you use the 4th fourth, uh, fourth round pick on him, or 14th round pick in best ball on him. It's not the worst thing that can happen. I, I'd rather take the upside in these late drafts than have a guy who's fucking, than take like... Uh, Bo Scarborough. This fucking trash ass shouldn't even be on this list. How you guys been doing uh throughout the quarantine, by the way? I didn't even I didn't even stop to ask you, beautiful people. What have you guys been staying busy with? My to-do list is fucking longer now than it was prior to the quarantine. Which is giving me a headache and anxiety. And that's probably why I'm on edge all the time. That's probably why I talk eighty two miles a minute. Cause I just have a lot a lot to do. But I wanna know. What are you guys doing? Are you doing anything fucking productive? Uh do you guys have a normal work schedule? Uh, are you guys just being pieces of shit all day? Do we have home workouts going on? I'm doing I'm doing workouts at home as much as I possibly can. 
Now that I have stairs in my apartment, I just be running up and down them shits all day. My Achilles started to get so sore. I'm like, this isn't normal. I shouldn't feel this way at 27. I think I'm just going to take a bunch of rookie wide receivers here. Denzel Mims, I don't think was taken yet. Mim Daddy, where you at? I spell that wrong. J. Jeff, Denzel Mims. I think Jefferson is going to end up being a first-round pick, so I think he kind of slots right into uh, some sort of slot role. And he'll probably get targets off the bat, so I kind of like him here. I'll grab him. I'll grab him a little fle little flexy-flexy action. The next pick is for the boys. So it looks like some of the rookies at the end of the draft they don't have in the system yet, maybe. Or maybe the search function's a little, sh a little shifty. Figured he was going to take Jefferson because he was looking for Mims and he wasn't there. So we'll go with Jefferson here. Um, so this is my team on the right here. Quarterbacks. Jimmy. No, that's not my team. That's Kenny Dubs. I was like, I would never fucking draft Jimmy G. Would you put that disrespect on me? Daniel Jones, Josh Allen, and Jeff Driscoll. Fuck. That's why I had three quarterbacks. Uh, I was looking at quarterbacks and I was like, yeah, I'm already good. Like I got three quarterbacks. Looks like they fucking took Jeff Driscoll. Daniel Jones, Josh Allen, I think can get me through the year though. Joe Mixon, Josh Jacobs, Cam Akers, Keyshawn Vaughn, Chase Edmonds at running back. James Washington, Odell, Miko Hardman, Adam Thielen, Robert Woods, T.Y. Hilton. Now, I love that wide receiver group. For going for going running back, running back off the rip, that is a beautiful wide receiver group. And I think we're going to see that. At, <laughs> hell yeah. Eddie Lacy for the boys. Woo! Love that pick. If, if, if you start a draft within Big Dogs and someone doesn't take Eddie Lacy, you're getting blocked. Actually, you're get you're getting in that in that lawsuit. You know, the lawsuit where I'm suing everybody in here, along with Jeff Driscoll. You're in that if you don't take Eddie Lacy somewhere. They're set off the board. I might just take Marshawn Lynch because fuck it. Oh no, I need my boy Scotty Miller. Scotty time. John Conyers, man. John Conyers. Hey, if you do a good John Gruden impression, I need you to uh, to tweet me. Don't just tweet me that you do a good impression. Tweet me a video of you doing an impression. I might need to hire you as a contractor for about five seconds. Yes, I knew someone was going to take Andrew Luck, and I respect that. I need someone to tweet me. My Twitter, again, is at Nick underscore BDGE. Oh, I forgot to put the promo back up. And this is the last This is the last round, and shit is getting out of control, and I'm obviously not saying anything valuable to you guys anymore, so we'll probably end it. And uh, I think I can show you the draft board. Oh, yeah, here you go. So this is the final draft board if you want to see it. Let me move myself as well as this. This is the final draft board. You could, I don't know, take a screenshot or something if you want to take a look. 1 through 7, 8 through 14, and then the rest of the draft. Oh, my God, look at Marshawn Lynch's picture. Can I zoom in on that shit? Woo! That's just out of control. Definitely gonna tweet that shit. That's a meme. All right, all right, all right. As you can see, I'm just, I'm, I'm all over the place. So that's gonna wrap up this video. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this somehow. You, there's no way this, this, this had to have been the worst mock draft I've ever done. Not my team. I love my team, but just in terms of analysis and me talking on camera, this was fucking brutal. And I apologize. I will never come at you with this type of content ever again. So if you somehow enjoyed, beautiful, because it only gets better from here. I will leave you with these parting words. Go sign up on Drafters. Use the promo code BDGE. Sign up for the Discord. Absolutely free. You will get invites to these drafts with me. And we can practice all April long. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful April. Hopefully in May we can get outside and we can hug each other and kiss each other and drink margaritas together and shit. I love y'all. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll see y'all next Ah, tomorrow.